Hi. Uh, yeah, sorry I was late. Um, I couldn't get away from work in time. Uh, it's pretty proud of you doing that, I suppose. <laughs> um, me and Deborah got on the train. Like, we sat down, there was this guy sitting across from us, and we kind of got chatting to him. Turns out he was an undecided voter. <laughs> 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 socialist and I'm very proud of that. Um, a Labour Party MP tried to out me as a socialist recently because <laughs> it's something to be ashamed of. I think that tells you enough about the, the direction of the Labour Party. It was Michael McCann MP by the way, just in case anyone's to be at. Um, tonight I don't, I'm not going to talk about uh, no, the book. Um, it's a, bit, it's a bit weird. Um, I don't want to talk about the affordability of independence because, you know, of course it's affordable. We've got a Nobel Prize winning economist telling us it's financially viable. And I don't want to talk about promises based on the white paper because as a socialist, I think we can go even further than that. And you've heard Robin outline some of the, the ideas and the possibilities that we have. What I do want to talk about is risk and the risks but it's not the risks of independence, it's the risks of a no vote. And I want to start with a quote from a newspaper. And that quote, some of you might have heard it before, but it's, um, how much of Scotland's economy will be left intact if a Scottish assembly gets the go ahead? It's, from, it's an editorial, it's from an editorial from the Daily Express prior to the referendum in 1979. And it continues, will our coal mines go gaily on? Will Ravenscraig or Linwood thrive? Well, we know what happened. Scotland voted no, and our coal mines shut. And from 1980 to 1995, Linwood had the highest rates of unemployment in Scotland, as 13,000 jobs were lost in Linwood when its car manufacturing industry collapsed. What that means for people is that families were ripped apart by that situation. Men and women had to strike out across Scotland, some to London and some emigrated to try and find work. And people talk about the dangers of capital flight, what happens when you know, capital leaves the country. I think that story is much, much worse. The hemorrhaging of our greatest natural resource are people. And as for Ravenscraig, I'm originally from Hamilton, from Lanarkshire, and I remember the day that I stood on the top of the hill that we used to live, in, um, live on with my mum and my dad and all our neighbours came up and everyone came out of their house to see the chimneys be destroyed. And that is a symbol of what Thatcher did to Scotland, destroyed a profitable industry to pay for her monetarist experiment in the city of London. If there's a no vote, next month. Can we trust Westminster to reward that perverse loyalty? They didn't reward it in 1979 and they won't reward us this time. There is a cross-party consensus at Westminster to continue with the renewal of Trident. Both Labour and the Tories are committed to austerity measures. There is £25 billion pounds worth of cuts yet to come. And that includes 10 billion from the welfare budget. And in the event of a no vote in 2015, as the Labour Party and the Tories battle it out for those middle class, middle England swing votes, the ones that pit them against each other, in the face of continued austerity from Westminster, it will be Scotland that pays the price again. And there's, you know, you hear the fact about. Um, well, you know, the, the Scottish vote has only changed the colour of the government of Westminster. Don't worry, England, we won't leave you with the Tories because our votes don't really matter anyway. A lot of people have been using that statistic. But I think it's more interesting if it's turned around. Because it is 59 years since Scotland last returned a Tory majority. And for more than half that time, we have endured Conservative rule. Based on that current picture, that means that we can expect Tory governments at Westminster for one out of every two parliaments. Voting no locks us in to Tory governments. 
Voting no locks us in to austerity and voting no locks us in to that neoliberal consensus at Westminster. And that's a depressing picture, but I think that there really is some hope. The campaign for yes, not the one in the mainstream media, not the one that has the polling results all over the press, not that one, the one that's happening at a grassroots level, it is doing something incredible. People are out talking to their neighbours that they've never met before. People are canvassing in their communities. This campaign for yes is rebuilding what Thatcher hated most, <coughs> our social solidarity. <coughs> and for me, solidarity is an important concept. It's something that I care deeply about. I care what happens not just to people in Scotland, but in the rest of the UK and um, further afield as well. And in that, for me, in the referendum itself, Scotland can offer only one of two gifts to the rest of the people in the UK. And one of those gifts is an extra 40-ish Labour MPs to join the Westminster cohorts every four years, some of whom will end up voting for Conservative policies like the welfare cap. And the other gift, it's a social democratic project to the north that shows that things can actually be done differently. A social democratic project where our ideas about social justice, about a new economy, where Robin's ideas of the Commonwealth, where Deborah's party can, can flourish, where we can actually show that there's a different way. And that's what the referendum is. The 18th of September is a chance. It is this little gap in that system that has reproduced misery and despair for so many people. It is an opportunity for us to unpick the fabric of Scotland and to stitch it all back up again the way that we want to see it. And I know that when I go to the ballot box there isn't, you know, the, the socialist vision of yes on the ballot paper, although if there was, I'd obviously vote for it. But, <laughs> um, that's not there, but it doesn't matter. Because in those two options, one of them is preserving three centuries of a union that brought us to this point, and the other opens up infinite possibilities. And finally, I just want to finish on this. There's only weeks to go, um, and suddenly it all feels so real, and I get really nervous and there's so much responsibility that we have. And for me, it's not. The question on the ballot paper doesn't really get to the, the heart of what I think the campaign is about. It's not a question of should Scotland be an independent country or should it not. The question for me is what outcome on the 18th of September will best further the interests of ordinary people in Scotland and beyond. And I think it's important that for the people who are already voting yes here, that we all go out tonight after this meeting for the weeks to come and convince as many people as we can that another Scotland really is possible. And I really genuinely believe that a yes vote will benefit the ordinary people in Scotland. And when we vote yes, because I think it's going to happen, it will be the people in this room, it will be the man we sat next to on the train, it will be the conductor that had his wee yes badge on, it's going to be the woman that gave me the thumbs up in Queen Street Station today with my yes badge, you know, on yourself hen, power to your elbow. <laughs> it will be us that will make a new economy and make a new Scotland, but more importantly, it will be us that creates a country that belongs to the people that live here. Thanks.